everyone. Welcome to the English devotional from Soldiers of the Cross. Let's begin in prayer. Heavenly Father, I come before your holy presence asking forgiveness of my sins so that my prayer can enter your holy throne. Thank you, Lord God, for this day that you have given us. Thank you for our life and our health, Lord. Thank you for your companion this weekend, for all of the services that we attended, all of the direction of the services, the messages, Lord, that were presented. Thank you, Father God, for all of the work and dedication that our brothers and sisters poured into bringing services that are filled with your Holy Spirit. I thank you and I praise you, Lord. I ask that those services would have encouraged us and given us the strength, Lord, to go about our week. May we be encouraged by your Holy Spirit, Lord, to continue this way, to continue this path. Father, I ask that you will be with those who are struggling, that you will comfort them, that you will guide them, that your presence will be ever known to them, Father God, that they know that you love them and that you're here for them and that you are continually inviting them to pour their burdens down at your feet. Father God, I ask that you will help our youth, Lord. You know the struggles that they face on a day-to-day basis. Many are starting school again here rather quickly. I ask you, Lord, that you will station your angels around them, keep them safe and protect them, Lord. I ask you, Father God, that you will keep them in your mighty hand. Lord, these things I ask in your son's name. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Today's devotional is titled, Lives Crossed. It was written by Milagros Quinteros and translated by Nelson Berries. Our biblical base comes from Mark chapter 5, verses 34 through 36. So says the word of God. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. While Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus, the synagogue leader. Your daughter is dead, they said. Why bother the teacher anymore? Overhearing what they said, Jesus told them, Don't be afraid, just believe. Amen. May we be blessed by the reading of the scripture. The woman began to get sick, and in parallel, a girl was being born. As time passed, the first one was getting worse with her illness, while the latter began walking and was the joy of her parents. At some point in that year, or perhaps earlier, the little girl became deathly ill. Both did not know each other. One was already an adult and was immersed in her own problems, ruined and left with no hope from the doctors, while the other, being a young girl, cared little about the lives of adults and strangers. Twelve years passed for both. Then one day, After a superhuman effort, with the little energy she had left dragging herself perhaps, the pale woman with bags under her eyes, gaunt and dry in life, touched the edge of Jesus' dress and immediately felt how the source of her bleeding stopped, regained strength, color returned to her face and the blood began to flow through her veins. Moments later, Jesus spoke to the dead girl, saying, Talitha kumi, and taking her by the hand, he handed her over alive to her parents. They both experienced their miracle after 12 years, and surely you can experience yours too. Jesus awaits you. Amen. My brothers and sisters, both of these women, one a very young girl, and another, an older lady, experienced a miraculous healing from Jesus. This woman who was bleeding a fountain of blood, the Bible says, for 12 years, spent every single penny that she had on doctors and medicines and herbs and any tiny spark of hope that anybody gave her. And she was left empty. She was left desolate. She was left without hope, but she knew 
that if she just touched the garment of Jesus, the hem of his garment, she would be healed. And you know, she had a divine intervention. When she touched his garment, the power left him and entered her. And even though the crowd that was gathering around Jesus, people were pressing up against him in every side, pushing against him, touching him, clamoring for his attention. He knew that somebody touched him and that touch was special. This woman also knew that that touch was special. Everybody else who was around them was oblivious to this divine intervention, this divine healing. But Jesus and this woman, they knew what had happened. My brothers and sisters, maybe you are waiting for your divine intervention. Maybe you have spent every penny like this woman. You have done everything humanly possible for healing, for restoration, for a solution to your situation, and nothing has happened. You've come up void and desolate. My brothers and sisters, come to the throne of grace and find hope, find healing, find the solution. Maybe you're like Jairus, the father of this little girl whose daughter has died. There was no hope in death. She was gone. At this point, her death was final. There was no more hope of healing for her. And so his friends told him, why bother the teacher? But Jesus told him, don't be afraid, just believe. And my brothers and sisters, this father, these parents had done everything possible for their daughter and she still died. But let me tell you, they called upon the Lord Jesus Christ for their beautiful, precious little girl. And he healed her. He commanded her, Talitha kumi, little girl, arise. And he restored life into her frail, tiny body. Maybe you are a parent right now and you've done everything possible for your children, but your children are spiritually dead. Your children are in such of a state that there doesn't seem to be any hope, any solution. Bring your children to the feet of the master. Bring them to Jesus's feet because he is waiting for you. The situation seems impossible for our humanness to comprehend. It seems impossible for a solution to become present, to become evident. But with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, all things are possible, my brothers and sisters. There is hope for you. There is hope for the situations that you have been praying for for years and years and years. My brothers and sisters, Jesus is awaiting for you. Just believe and don't be afraid. Amen. May the Lord receive the honor and the glory. Christ our Savior, He hears us when we call. Jesus, there's no sweeter name. Isn't the name of Jesus wonderful? Isn't the name of Jesus wonderful? All the world can come to him and have their sins removed. Isn't the name of Jesus wonderful? So wonderful. Isn't the name of Jesus beautiful? Isn't the name of Jesus beautiful? Son of God. Son of God and one of us, lover of our souls, isn't the name of Jesus beautiful, eternal
King. Eternal King, you reign forever, and we will sing the glory of your name. Be lifted high for all the world to see, your name is all they need, your name That's all we need. That's all we need. Isn't the name of Jesus all we need? He's the way, the truth, the life. 
The only way to God is in the name of Jesus, oh, we believe. Amen. What a beautiful song. And now we invite you once again to journey with us through our daily Bible reading as we continue with the book of Isaiah. And now we ask that the blessed love of God, the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the companion and communion of the Holy Spirit, our great counselor, be with all of his children now and forever. Amen.